Good afternoon. Hope you are doing well. So um, today I'm going to discuss with you about pricing strategies for firms with market power. I would like I would like to recall that we have learned four types of market structures, and we learned that firms that operate in perfect competitive market managers in such firm does not need for him to determine at what price he should sell his product because simply in this type of market the price is determined by the market forces therefore the manager simply will follow the price of the market how much other firms are selling the product and the manager should follow but other market structure like monopoly, oligopoly and monopolistic market, this type of markets or firms that operating in this market, they have some sort of power or pricing power. And here managers need to learn some basic pricing strategies for maximizing their firm profit. So we are going to provide a practical advice that you can use to implement such pricing strategies typically using information that is readily available to managers. Also we should See how a manager can use publicly available information about demand elasticities or the elasticity to determine the profit maximizing markup used to set the product price. So, in this topic, we are going to discuss about the basic pricing strategies and also about strategy that yield an even greater profit. So I recall back that for firms that operate in market power, i.e. monopoly, oligopoly and monopolistic market, they face a downward slope in demand and this is logic because these firms they have to trade off between selling many quantities at lower prices or selling few quantities at higher prices. So also we know that in these firms managers produce where they maximize their profit in a situation where their marginal revenue equal to the marginal cost or MR equal to MC. So here we have a basic profit maximization in action. We suppose that an inverse demand for a firm product is given by P equal to 10 minus 2Q and the cost function is CQ equal to Q. What is the profit maximizing level of output and price for this firm? simply you equate m r equal to m c how we calculate m r first we calculate r r equal to p times q we have p is 10 minus 2 q times q so you will have r equal 10 q minus 2 q square therefore m r is a differentiation of r to q then we will have m r equal 10 minus 4 q and CQ2 because we have CQ equal to Q so MC equal differentiation of 2Q which is 2 so when, when we equate MR equal to MC we will get 10 minus 4Q equal 2 and therefore Q equal to 2 and P equal to 6 but many firms or managers they may not have an access to this type of information. 
So one if the estimate of the demand and the cost function are not available for managers. Maybe these firms, they don't have a research department. Those firms, that are small firms that they could not, you know, hire an expert in order to estimate for them these type of equations. So, fortunately, steel care managers approximately determine at what price they should set their product to maximize their profit with a little available information. So, if there is a given minimum information about the demand and cost, a manager can do reasonably a good job of determining what price to charge a product. For example, a retailer have a rough estimate of the marginal cost of each item sold. Right? And with this information, a monopoly and monopolistic competitive firms profit maximizing the price market is computed if the marginal cost or the price paid to the supplier is now, of course, you, you should know how much you pay for your uh, product and the price elasticity of demand since it is typically available for a representative firm in the industry maybe it is not your company but you may buy that type of information from other institutions that they publish this type of data or may they you borrow what is the elasticity or demand elasticity of the demand from another company which has similar product with you? So if we have these two information, therefore, in order to maximize your profit, if you recall last topic, we say that in monopolistic competition, MR equal to P times 1 plus elasticity of the firm divided by elasticity of the firm. Since MR equal to MC, therefore, MC equal to P times 1 plus E divided by E. And from here, we can get P equal to E divided by 1 plus E times MC. So, you can see here, now, managers knows his marginal cost. And also, he can buy information about elasticity. Therefore, he can determine how much the price he should charge in order to maximize his product, uh, his profit. Sorry. So uh, here, a simple also uh, problem solving. We have a manager of a convenience store compete in a monopolistically competitive market, and buys cola from a supplier at a price of one point two five means that this is the marginal cost. This one, it costs them for per unit. It's got just is going to get how much he, he, he buy it and sell it. But for instance, sometimes, for example, if you need to put this cola in the fridge for cooling, also you can calculate that. You can calculate how much is your bill and how, you know, how, you, how much you know, this uh, fridge will consume electricity. And, and how much or how many units of, of cola you put in there and you can find also how much the consumption you can uh, add for that price but we assume that this cola is just buy it from the supply and sell it so the manager thinks that because there are several supermarkets nearby the demand for cola sold at her store is slightly more elastic than the elasticity for the representative food store. Specifically, the elasticity of demand for cola sold by her store is minus 4. E equals minus 4. What price should the manager charge for a liter of cola to maximize the profit? Here is very easy. We have our formula. P equals E divided by 1 plus E times MC. Correct? MC equals 1 
0.15 or also it can equal to 5 divided by 4. E divided by 1 plus E equal to minus 4 divided by 1 minus 4. So here equal to 4 divided by 3. Therefore P equal 4 divided by 3 times MC which is 5 divided by 4 and we have P equal 5 divided by, divided by 3. So at P equal 1.67, this firm maximizes its profit. But this is what if we have a current oligopoly when each of firms we have n number of firms operating in a current oligopoly and they have identical cost structure and produce similar product. So in this case, a simple profit maximizing price or markup in current equilibrium is P equal. Instead to put E of firm, here we put N number of firm times elasticity of market, not of the firm, per se, but of the market. So P equal N times EM divided by 1 plus N times EM all times MC. So where EM is the market elasticity of the man. And you can see in previous two examples, it is very straightforward where you can determine how much you should sell your price or how much you should charge in order to maximize your profit. Now, we go beyond a single price per unit model where in some markets manager can enhance profit beyond those resulting from charging all consumer a single per unit price. So we have three types of strategies. Pricing strategies that extract surplus from the consumer. Pricing strategy for a special cost and demand structure. And pricing strategy in a market with an intense price competition. I start for the first model that extracts surplus from consumer and we have three different models. Price discrimination, or sorry for, we have first, second and third degree. We have two part pricing, block pricing and commodity bundling. So each strategy is appropriate for a firm with various cost structure and degree of market independence. I start with the first degree price discrimination. Here, price discrimination is the practice of charging different prices of consumer for the same good or services. Means that you are going to change each consumer different price depend on his highest willingness to pay for that product. But the problem is that how you as a manager could know each consumer maximum willingness to pay for each unit of the product. That is really, will be extremely difficult. If you can do that, you will get or you extract the all surplus from consumer and in the highest possible profit. You will get highest profit, but it is really extremely difficult. But in some cases, yes, you can. For example, car wash can do that pricing or discrimination. Car wash may not display the price of the car wash. If someone comes with a Mercedes Benz, they may charge him his high price because based on his ownership of the car, it shows that he's very wealthy. And those who come with um, Viva or Myvi, they may charge him a lower price because it shows that he may know that he's very wealthy. So, in that case, you can discriminate your consumers, even though that it is very difficult, but you still can. Um, here, where, as I say, suppose this is the marginal cost, and if we are in a, a, a monopoly or, or, or uh, uh, 
monopolistic uh, firm, the MC is the supply, we say, right? So this is the demand. By right, in perfect competitive market, supply equal to demand and the price equal to 4 and quantity equal to 5. Since it is not the case, so you as a manager, you can discriminate. So you can sell the first unit at 10, someone. Another consumer, maybe you sell to him at price of 9. Another one, you can sell to him at price of $6. Another one, maybe at 4 In this case, you will get all the surplus. So this will be the firm profit and the first degree price discrimination. And this is the highest profit that you can get. You can get more than that. But, as I say, the first degree price discrimination is extremely difficult. To determine or discriminate those consumers. So you may as manager go for the second degree price discrimination where the practice of posting a discrete schedule of declining prices for a different range of quantity. Means that you can say if you buy 10 quantities I will charge you to ring it. If you buy five only I will charge you for ring it per unit. If you take 100 quantity, I will charge you only one ringgit. So the implication, firm extracts some surplus from consumers without needing to know the identity of various consumers' demand. So here you don't need to go and determine what is the maximum willingness to pay for that product by just post different prices for different quantities. And here, people will buy based on that. Those who can buy only two units, you charge them 7.6 each. Those who can buy four units, you may charge them only 5.2. Maybe those who can buy five units, you charge them only four. So here, you can extract some of the surplus, but not all. You can see, we still hear this, yeah, the, 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 the white uh, shaded area where this is a consumer surplus but you cannot get it so this only will be the profit or the maximum profit and the second degree of price discrimination and the third degree of price discrimination where or is the practice of charging different prices based on systematic differences in demand across demographic consumer group means that you will have two different groups or three different groups with totally different prices. So what is the implication? If one price was charged to both groups such that the marginal revenue to group 1 equal to the marginal cost. So we have MR1 equal to P times 1 plus E1 divided by E1 and equal to MC. Then if MR2 equal to P times 1 plus E2 divided by E2 and does not equal to MC, and we assume that E1 does not equal to E2 and profit will not be maximized in this case. So in order to maximize your profit, therefore it must have this formula. To maximize the profit, a firm with market power produce the output at which the marginal revenue to each group equal to marginal cost. So here, if you have this, MR1 equal to MC, but MR2 does not equal to MC, you are not maximizing your profit. So in order to maximize your profit, you must have MR1 equal to MC and MR2 equal to MC. And we have seen that uh, previous topics. So the surplus for the third degree price discrimination. And here we have an example. You are a manager of a pizzeria that produces at a marginal cost of six per pizza. The pizzeria is a local monopoly near campus. During the day, only students eat at your restaurant. In the evening, while students are studying, faculty members eat there. If students have an elasticity of demand of pizza equal to minus 4, and faculty has an elasticity of demand equal to minus 2, what should your pricing policy to be maximized? Or to maximize your profit, and we just put here, 
price of L or lowered demand. Uh, uh, here we assume that faculty would be unwilling to purchase co pizzas from students. Uh, means that students will not buy the pizza and go and sell it to their staff. So, the conditions for effective fair price discrimination hold means that you must have one condition. When you sell to those students with a lower price, they should not go and sell it back to faculty member. In that case, it will be profitable to charge a lunch menu price and a dinner menu price. These prices are determined as follow. So when student take the lunch, P lunch or PL equal to 1 plus E, that's mean minus 4 divided by minus 4 equal to 6. Correct? So PD times 1 plus E, which is for faculty member, which is 2, divided by minus 2 equal to 6. So solving these two equations, we will get PL equal to 8, or the price for the lunch of our student equal to 8, and the price for dinner of faculty member equal to 12. So you can see two different prices. Now we are going to um, discuss about the surplus extraction, two-part pricing. So two-part pricing is a pricing strategy whereby a firm with a market power charge a fixed fee for the right to purchase is good, plus a per unit charge for each unit purchase. So this pricing strategy is commonly used in athletic clubs to enhance profit. For example, golf courses and health club, for instance, typically charge a fixed initiative fee plus a charge in either per month or per visit to use the facilities. And here we can see, even here in Kampa, we have some gym or gymnasium club, they do that strategy. They will charge you a membership, let's say 100 ringgit per year, and after they charge you a fee per month or per visit. So if you can see here, how this strategy is going to, to work. So we assume that a monopoly, a monopolistic company. So it has its marginal cost equal to two, and this is the marginal revenue, and this is the demand. So this firm will maximize its profit where MR equal to MC, and it should be here, where quantity is four, right? So what is the price charge? Goes up here, then we assume six. So at this here, how much the profit? So the profit should be six units, oh sorry, four units times six, right? Right? And this all revenue. So 24, right? This 24 revenue minus the cost, how much the cost? Four units times two. So, remaining only this area as a profit, which is 6 minus 2, which is 4, times 4 equal to 16. And in this case, how much the consumer surplus? If we count this, 10 minus 6 equal to 4, 4 times 4 equal 16, so divide by 2, then equal 6. So, this company still can get this 8 dollars from the consumer surplus and we have this is well, we can see here right that they were lost right here right now there is a possibility that the company can get all this surplus this all so what company should do here as we say this is the marginal cost, correct? And we assume it as a supply, right? So the company will produce where the demand equal to the supply, or let's say marginal cost, here at 8, right? So it will sell at 2. So this here, the price equal to MC. And here we are, we are talking about perfect market. 
So, here in that case, firm will earn how much? A zero economic profit. But this firm monopoly, so what they what this firm can do is it will sell at two, but in order to buy quantities for these eight quantities at two dollars, you need to pay a fee or subscribe a fixed fee. How much cargo this fee will take this all? So company will count 10 minus 2, that's mean 8. 8 divided times 8 equals 64. 64 divided by 2 because triangle, right? So equals 32. So here, this firm will ask you to pay a fixed fee of $32 in order to purchase its quantities. Therefore, the firm will rip out all of the consumer surplus. Consumer surplus become equal to zero. You can see, sell only at two, only at the cost or marginal cost, but get this all. This is for the two-part pricing in action. So now we talk about um, another surplus extraction or we call the, the block pricing. So block pricing is a pricing strategy in which identical products are packaged together in order to enhance profit by forcing consumer or customer to make an all or none decision to purchase. So the profit maximizing price on the package is the total value of the consumer received for a package. And you can see the same example just now. For example, this is the firm. So it can, sorry, I need them back here. It can uh, sell eight units directly, right? Eight units. How much will decide the price? So we have here at these eight units, two dollars, right? Two times eight, that means 16, right? So the firm. 16 plus this all consumer surplus 10 minus 2 which is 8 times 8 64 divided by 2 32 so here 32 plus 16 become 84 so the firm will package 8 units of the product and sell them at eight, uh, uh, 48 sorry 48 not 84 48 so here the firm rip out all the consumer surplus also. So you as a consumer, you don't have choice. You cannot buy only one quantity or two. You have to buy the whole block, which is eight unit at price of $48. Then this is will be the profit with the block pricing, which is 32. And this is the cost here now. Another one is surplus extraction or commodity bundling so a community bundling is the practice of bundling several different products together and selling them at a single better price uh, an example a company or a uh, retailer who sell computers he will sell for the screen keyboard mouse all together in a bundle the key assumption consumer differ with respect to the amounts they are willing to pay for multiple products sold by firm, manager cannot observe different consumers' valuation. So these are the two assumptions. So for example, we assume here consumer number one, consumer number two. Okay, uh, we have a computer and a monitor. So uh, valuation of a computer, consumer one, he is willing to pay maximum two thousand for the computer and two hundred for the monitor, and consumer number two. He is willing to pay a maximum of 1500 for a computer and 300 for a monitor. So how does the manager price a computer and a monitor? Suppose the manager price each component separately. One price of the computer PC and another price for a monitor PM. So we put PC and PM. So to simplify profit computation, suppose the cost to the firm of another price for the minute monitor sorry, is um, again um, 
To simplify profit computation, suppose the cost of the firm of computers and monitors is zero. We assume the cost is zero. If the firm charge 2000 for a computer, right? It would sell a computer only to consumer one and in 2000. Because this second, he can pay maximum 1500, he can buy it. And if the firm charge 1500 for the computer, let's say charge 1500, both of the consumer will buy and the firm will have 3000. So clearly, the profit maximizing price to charge a computer is 1500 here in that case. Similarly, if the firm price monitor at 300, it can sell only one and it makes a revenue of 300 or profit of 300. Correct? Because we assume cost is zero. Because this number one maximum he can pay for monitor is 200 he cannot buy with 300 but if it said 200 both of them they can buy and the firm will earn a profit of 400 so but on the surface it appears that the most of them most of them can earn is 3400 we we'll sell this at 1,500, 3,000. Sell this at 200 is 400. That's mean 3,400. Correct. Okay. Now, in this case, the firm sells two computers and two monitors. However, the firm can earn higher profit by bundling computers and monitors and selling the bundle at the price of 1,800. See ya. Yeah? Consumer 1, how much he can pay maximum pay, uh, payment? 2,000 plus 200. Means that 2,200. He buy both. Consumer 2, this plus this, 1,500 plus 300 is 1,800. So he can buy both of them. So the maximum here, firm, can put the price is 1,800. For is a bundle. That means that we say uh, you buy the computer with the monitor 1800. This can buy and this also can buy. So in that case, the company will get how much? 1800 times 2, 3600, which is greater than 3400. So this example illustrates that commodity bundling can enhance profit when consumers differ with respect to the amount they are willing to pay for a multiple product sold by a firm. Now, what we go to another case where we have a peak load pricing. So here, many markets have period in which demand is high and period in which demand is low. For example, in the toll route, tend to have more traffic during rush hours than to other times in the day. But fortunately, in Malaysia, you know, uh, whatever it is a peak or low, the price is same. But some of the countries there, yeah, they have this strategy. When it is a peak hour, they charge higher. But I don't think that in Malaysia they're doing that. So. In this case, manager is going to deal with two scenarios and this graph will explain this for us. So here we have the demand when it is high and here the demand when it is, uh, so this is the marginal revenue it is high. Then we have here the demand when it is low. So lesser and this the marginal revenue is low. So how we are going to explain that? In general, where there are two types of demand, a firm will maximize profit by charging different prices. 
pH and pH, right? To a different group of the demand. In the case of the peak load pricing, in the group refer to those who purchase in different time during the day, All right? So in the figure, for instance, the demand during low peak times is such the marginal revenue PL. Yeah. In construct during the high peak times, marginal revenue equal to the marginal cost. Yeah, marginal revenue to marginal cost, and equal to QL. And QL equal to PL. And here in the high peak, marginal revenue equal to marginal cost equal to here. QH and up here we have PH. Why the marginal cost in the peak hours is horizontal? And this because at the peak hours is the maximum capacity. And here we cannot move, we cannot provide any more quantities. So the marginal cost will go horizontally. So keep increasing and increasing and increasing. So here, therefore, the profit maximizing price during the high peak times is pH, yeah? and during the low peak time is PL. Thus, as in the case of price discrimination, the firm charges two different prices, a low price during the low peak demand, and a high price during the high peak demand. So we notice in the figure that, if the firm charge a high price of pH at all times of the day, no one would purchase during the low peak period, which means here. If the firm keep charging pH during this period, no one will buy. We will have zero quantities because the demand should be here. By lowering the price during the low peak times, by charging a high price during the high peak times, the firm increased its profit by selling to some consumer during the low peak times. Similarly, if the firm charged a low price during all time, then, means here, with the firm say PL, even though we are in the peak time, so it would lose money in this case during the high peak times. So when consumers are willing to pay for a higher prices. So now we go for special demand and cost or cost subsidies. Cost subsidy is a pricing strategy in which profit gain from the sale of one product are used to subsidize sales from a related product. The principle, whenever the demand for two products produced by a firm are interrelated through a cost or demand, the firm may enhance profit by decision. Selling one product at or below the cost and the other product above the cost. There is a very good example here, for example, uh, Acrobat Reader or the PDF. Here, many applications uh, in your phone, you know, softwares in your computer do that. They will give a free version but with limited function for free. That means below the marginal cost and sell the full version at a higher price. So, this is the case. And special demand cost, for example, we have transfer pricing. Transfer pricing is a pricing strategy in which a firm optimally set an, in, an internal price at which an upstream division sells on input to a downstream division. So the important is most division managers are provided an incentive to maximize their own division profit and transfer pricing align divisions, managers, incentives with that of the overall firm and increase overall firm profits.
So we consider a large frame with two divisions. Upstream division in the sole provider of the key input. Downstream division uses the input produced by the upstream division to produce the final output. Upstream division has the market power and incentive to maximize divisional profit. Leads managers to produce where MRU equal to MCU or upstream. Implication, the P is greater than the MC. Similar situations exist for the downstream division profit. Maximization lead to P downstream division is greater than MC of the downstream division. So both in divisions might price up over the marginal cost resulting a phenomenon called double margini marginalization. So, transfer pricing is used to overcome double marginalization. A transfer pricing rule set the internal price at which an upstream division sets input to downstream division in order to maximize the off-frame profit. Require the upstream division to produce such that its marginal cost MCU equal to the net marginal revenue and LMD to the downstream division so therefore n or the net lmd equal to mrd minus mcd and equal to mcu now we go to the intense price competition price matching price matching is a strategy in which a firm advertises a price and promise to match any lower price offered by a competitor used to mitigate the stock outcome associated with the firms competing in homogeneous product or we call it partner oligopoly. The outcome, if all firms in the market adopt a price matching policy, all firms can set the monopoly price and a monopoly profit. Instead of a zero profit, it would end in the usual one-shot partner oligopoly. So this is maybe we discuss for the next topic. What are the potential or the issues dealing with false consumer claims of low prices? Many consumers may say, oh, I found that uh, cheaper in Tesco. Maybe you bought from, from Giant and you claim that you got cheaper in Tesco. Competitors with lower cost structure. Uh, that is a potential issue. If you have competitors with very low uh, cost structure, they may lower the prices and you will lose. Another one, inducing brand loyalty. Brand loyalty, customer continue to buy a firm product even if another firm offers a slightly better price. Strategy used to mitigate the tension of Bertner competition. The method for, inclu uh, in, in, for uh, inducing uh, brand loyalty is advertising company and frequent uh, buyer program. So you have two uh, methods that can be used. I would like you to notice that such an advertising strategy will not work if consumer believe products to be homogeneous. A self-service for example for a company, let's say petrol station, would be hard pressed to uh, to convince a consumer that its petrol is really different from the identical brand sold across the street or another petrol station. In this instance, firm can resort to alternative strategies to promote brand reality. Some Petrol station, for example, now have frequent flyer program, or they have this what we call the loyalty card. Now we have randomized pricing here, where a strategy in which a firm intentionally vary or varies its price in attempt to hide price information from consumer and rivals. So, what is the benefit? Consumers can learn from experience which firm charge the lowest price in the market. Reduce the ability for rival firms to undercut the firm price, but it is not always profitable. And this is you can see it where in these uh, supermarkets in Giant Tesco, most of the time you find different prices, uh, you know, in different days, you know, for different products. So as a conclusion, faced by discrimination, 
block pricing and two-part pricing permit a firm to extract a consumer surplus. Commodity bundling um, or second degree and third degree price discrimination permit a firm to extract some but not all consumer surplus. A simple markup rules are the easiest to implement but leave consumers with the most surplus and may result in a double margin marginalization. Different strategies require different informations. Thank you very much.